when they needed the public's health, please hand in all your photos. This way they can check all the photos, make sure there wasn't anything caught, and then they can go and, you know, make up who they're going to arrest. Now, what they're saying is there was a a closed circuit television recording indicating that these individuals had a piece of luggage on the sidewalk and they removed an improvised explosive device from the luggage and then they left, leaving the device behind but taking the luggage with them. So they're asking for people to hand in photos or do they know anything about it? Do they Have they ever seen the luggage? And what I think that they're doing here is there's something that people might have seen that the FBI needs to cover up. They need to get these individuals who were, of course, under the umbrella of the FBI doing what they said to do, and something went wrong. And I don't think they realized there was a closed-circuit television recording They saw what happened. They saw maybe there were people around taking pictures or something like that. But we can see right now, the only reason the FBI really needs help into locating people is when they want to see their information, their photos, because they know exactly where these people are. They know where the luggage is. So we can see already their whole entire false flag, it's falling apart. It looks like uh, the Soros race war is on. It looks like something erupted in Charlotte. They're pushing this very hard. There was a man that was fatally shot. He's identified as Keith Lamont Scott. And the report said that the person exited the car with a gun that got back in. And the officers said, oh, he has a gun, it's a threat, let's shoot him. And we can see that this is the MO of the police. So people went out, and of course, this is being ginned up now. And at least 100 protesters gathered, and they were protesting. And of course, the police were out there, they used tear gas. And the corporate media is playing this up, because what they're trying to do is... They're trying to create an instance where people start to riot. And it looks like, and we know from the documents from George Soros, this is the plan. And they're pushing this very, very hard to get something started. Because as we know, the elections are coming up. We know they have certain things in the pipeline that they're going to use to create some type of an event to postpone the elections. Now, we saw these bombings that went off. We know this was a distraction for what happened out in Syria. And if we continually see more and more of these events, we know where we're headed. Now, of course, this is the, this depends on the polling. And I'm not talking about the corporate polling that they show America, because that is brainwashing polling. This is the polling they use to try to convince you that, oh, it's heading in one way when it really isn't. I'm talking about a separate poll that the shadow government uses where they gauge where everything is because you know they can't manipulate the elections if the spread is too far apart. It it would be completely obvious. So they will look at the poll information. They will know where they stand. If the candidate they want is right where they want it in the polls, they're going to let the elections go through. If it isn't, and the candidate they want is very far apart, we're going to see many more of these type of events leading up to something that is going to be very, very different than the October surprises that we're used to. Now, out in South Korea we see that the U.S. and South Korea, they're going to simulate attacks on nuclear facilities because they're getting prepared for the worst-case scenario. Now, this simulation is dubbed Red Flag. 
which will take place in Alaska from October 3rd until October 21st. And we can see right now, why are they doing this? We know they're trying to push war. We know they're trying to provoke North Korea. Are they planning to send in a special op team into North Korea to maybe attack one of their nuclear facilities? Maybe. And of course, then they'll deny that anyone was ever there. And North Korea will then go ahead and lash out and we will be into World War III. Because this is how these things work. They need to make it look like North Korea did something out of nothing. They just decided to attack because the U.S. government central bankers, they are becoming desperate. I mean, we have a perfect storm coming up this November and the situation for the U.S. government central bankers, it doesn't look good. The economy's failing. They're losing control of the Middle East. It's not going well in the South China Seas and they're losing Syria, and they'll never get to Iran, which means the petrodollar is doomed. And they don't want this system coming down on its own. They don't want something out of left field. They don't want something to hit where they're not prepared to have this huge story of why this entire system collapsed. Now, the Turkish government they are looking to extend the mandate which allowed them to invade Syria and be in Iraq for one more year. So we can see right now that they're trying to push their authority to have uh, this cross-border war in Syria because they're not finished with their operation. Their operation, their agenda is to create a safe zone. And I know the United States is out there continually saying, we don't want a safe zone. We really don't agree with Turkey. But we can see right now, when push comes to shove, all of a sudden, the United States is going to go along with this safe zone because this is what they really want. We have to look what they do, all their actions, not what they say. Now, during the airstrikes where Syria was bombed by the U.S., Russia, well, they contacted the U.S. twice to stop the airstrikes. And the U.S. finally stopped. Now, they knew exactly what they were doing. They were using A-10s, F-16s. They had a call-in for the bombing. And we know that the Islamic State, as soon as the bombing ended... They went forth and they mounted a major offensive. And the only way they knew to move forward is if they were contacted. And this is how the U.S. just showed the world that they're supporting the Islamic State. And this is why we had that distraction to get it off the corporate media and distract us with other stories. So we can see right now the U.S., well, their backs are against the wall. Now, the U.S. is out there, and you see it all over the corporate media, where they're pushing the idea that Russia bombed the U.N. humanitarian aid convoy. And we can see right now, even if Russia didn't do it, the U.S. is saying, we're still going to blame Russia, which makes no sense whatsoever. But Russia is out there with Syria saying, we were not involved with this whatsoever. Now, the Russian Defense Ministry, they published a video of the convoy. And if you want to see the video, you can come to the x22report.com site, click on the episode, and scroll down, and you'll be able to see the video. If you're on YouTube, you'll see the video there. Now, what we're seeing right now is that Russia produced this video they had drones flying above, monitoring the convoy. And it shows an SUV carrying heavy mortar with the convoy. And 
when they're looking at this, they're saying that uh, there really wasn't a bombing. It looked like fire. And we can see right now that something else might have happened. Now, of course, the U.S. is out there and they're saying that, no, this was a bombing, they attacked it, but the U.N. already changed its assessment of the incident and they're not calling it an airstrike anymore. They're just calling it an attack. So that is very different. Now, Russia is out there and they were monitoring the entire situation and they're saying that the U.S. had a drone in the vicinity of the humanitarian convoy. They're saying on the evening of September 19th, in that specific region, a drone belonging to the International Coalition was there because it took off from the Inserlik Air Base in Turkey, was flying at a height of about 3,600 meters and traveling around 200 kilometers per hour. And that object was around the area of the convoy. And the video footage that they have, which they haven't released the second part, shows the convoy catching on fire. Now, Moscow just gave all the evidence to the UN Security Council. And Lavrov is out there saying that we need a full and impartial investigation into this incident. Now, we know the United States government central bankers they don't want any type of investigation because they like to use propaganda. They don't like to use proof. They don't like to show evidence. They don't like to do any of that. They just like to spout it out there on the corporate media and hopefully it sticks. That's what they do. Now, Russia sees what is happening. They are now sailing their Admiral Kutsunov cruiser to the Mediterranean. And it will join up with their other ships. They have about six warships and three or four support vessels from all fleets in this area. So it is heading to this area to support Syria. So the question is, why is the U.S. pushing this story that Russia and Syria bombed the UN humanitarian convoy, even though the UN said it was not an airstrike, it was just an attack of some sorts. They don't have all the evidence, but they can tell it wasn't an airstrike. So the US is continually pushing the idea that it was an airstrike. Well, we got our answer today. We know because we've been discussing this for a very long time. They're setting up a safe zone slash no-fly zone slash exclusive zone. They keep changing the names to confuse people. It is a no-fly zone because John Kerry was out there and he's saying that Syrian Air Force should be banned from flying over territories held by the so-called moderate opposition. Well, just by saying that, he just admitted that the convoy was going through the moderate opposition area. Because they're saying that Russia or Syria flew in and bombed the UN convoy. Why would it only be in the moderate opposition area that they don't want these jets flying? So he kind of messed up right there. And we know from the ceasefire talks, this is exactly what they were trying to do. They were trying to stop the Syrian Air Force from flying over the moderate rebels. And, of course, Kerry is out there saying that, oh, we should do this because this will help us deliver humanitarian aid in northern Syria. But we can see what they're doing. Turkey cleared out all of this area. They're creating a safe zone. They want a no-fly zone in this entire area. Because their agenda is still the same. Nothing's changed. And we know it has nothing to do with the Islamic State. Once the Islamic State is eradicated, the U.S. is not leaving the Middle East. Actually, Ashton Carter, Defense Secretary Ashton Carter, he already said that the U.S. military is going to stay in the Middle East even when the Islamic State group is defeated in Iraq and Syria. We're going to be here for a while because this has nothing to do with the Islamic State.
This has to do with controlling the Middle East, keeping the puppet governments in power. Now, because of what happened here, Russia has issued new rules of engagement in Syria. What they're saying is any aircraft threatening the Syrian army will be shot down. That includes U.S., the U.S. coalition forces, Turkey, Israel. They are all in the crosshairs right now. Now, this might be a problem because we know that the U.S., Israel, the coalition forces, the central bankers, they will have them sacrifice one of these fighter jets to get the war started. They most likely will send someone in to get this war started. Now, of course, they're not just going to fly the jet in and then all of a sudden they're going to say, oh, look, we flew a jet in, we were attacking Syria, we were attacking Russia, and they, they responded to this attack. What they're going to do is they're going to make it look like Russia and Syria just attacked. And we can see right now they will try something like this to get the war started. Because we can see right now the United States government central bankers, they have no alternative. They're going to be asked to leave Syria. There is no reason to be in Syria once the Islamic State is removed. Actually, let me correct that. The United States government and all the rest of the coalition forces should have never been in Syria. They invaded a sovereign country. But you know that Russia and Syria, once the Islamic State is gone or very close to being gone, they're going to say, there's no reason for you to be here. Please leave. What does the U.S. do at that point? Do they say, okay, let us pack up and go? No. They need to create an event before that happens. And this is why I'm saying this October surprise is going to be much, much different than any other October surprise that we've seen. It's all dependent on many different factors. But when we look at the geopolitical indicators, when we look at the economic indicators, we can see the U.S. government central bankers, they're not going to have a choice. Because what's happening in the Middle East affects everything. So when we look at the polls, and I'm not talking about the corporate polls, I'm talking about the shadow government, the elite goal, uh, polls, they're going to be looking at that. They're going to be looking at the situation in the Middle East. And if it's not going in their favor and things aren't working out, they're not getting the candidate they want, they're not getting what they want in Syria, and things are rapidly falling apart, they will create this October surprise and it won't be emails being released, it won't be the tax returns of Trump, it's going to be something much, much different. And when you really look at the situation and the crisis that we're heading into, we can see that they're preparing for this moment where they decide, okay, we need to do this because we have no other alternative. The economy is failing. The serious situation, it's getting worse. We have no leverage there. The candidate that we want, well, the polls are showing that that candidate's going to lose. When all of these things happen, they will create this October surprise, something that we've never seen before.